Joining me today is Crystal Vernay. She is a business coach and brand strategist, and we're going to be talking about increasing sales through lead generation. But before we get into it, I have to, have to, have to give Crystal a moment to shine and tell us more about yourself, anything you'd like us to know. And thank you so much for being here with me today. Take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, DJ, for having me here. Um, yeah, I mean, guys, I am a serial entrepreneur. I have four businesses right now um, at the time of this recording, um, and I'm looking to uh, start two more in the new year. Um, so uh, that's coming um, from one of my businesses. It's going to be our 10-year anniversary next year, so I'm super excited about that. Uh, my brick and mortar business, Divas and Dolls Fitness. So we're gearing up for that um, five years for Cirque Central and five years for um, my business coaching and brand strategy business next year. So it's just, you know, a couple of big things coming up. I also released a book um, this year, The Brand Builder Blueprint, Shattering Barriers in Business and Beyond, the number one Amazon number one bestseller. Um, and then I had a summit this year, vir virtual and in-person, The Brand Builder Blueprint. Um, and I, content, I want to continue to doing that in the uh, years to come. So both virtual and in-person um, events. And fun fact, I've done 19 speaking engagements this year. So, yeah, wow. it's been a year. <laughs> it's been a year, a busy one, a full one. 19, yeah. you know what? We are connected on LinkedIn and I see you. <laughs> I'm like, what this girl? Is that something else? She's speaking. And we met through. We were both on a summit together. That's how we first connected. So good for you. Good for you. Kudos to you. Thank you for sharing. I love to, okay, so you've been busy. You've got four businesses right now, a book, more things coming up, anniversaries. But I always, always like to ask the story of the transition story, the 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 journey from employee to entrepreneur. Uh, would you like to share your story with us today? I'd love to hear it. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think everyone's journey is different. So I want to start with that. And no two journeys are alike. And, you know, I always tell people some people's journey will be quick. Some people's journey will be a little bit more lengthy. And for me, I just think everything that I've experienced all happened for a reason. Um, I had a, a good corporate job and I started my pole dancing studio on the side. Um, it was open at night. So my nine to five, I was working. And then after that, I would go to my studio and teach classes um, in the evening. And, um, you know, the studio started to, uh, it wasn't, it didn't do well the first few years. Um, as you know, most businesses, it takes most us a while yeah. to kind of get it going. Um, but while I was building, I was married um, to uh, my high school sweetheart who was less than supportive. And so um, if you can imagine hearing things like, why are you doing this? This is a stupid idea. Your business should, you know, you should just close it. No one cares about this. You got an expensive hobby. You're never going to make it. Um, you know, hearing that from my um, husband and also my mom, too, because my mom felt that I need to be in a more traditional role, like yeah. be a wife, be a mom, stop this whole business corporate thing. It doesn't matter. Um, and so in spite of all this, I continue to build my business, hire coaches and mentors and try and improve things. And I did. Um, so the business started to do well. Um, and uh, probably around year five, um, I felt like it was in a really good place and I wanted to leave uh, my corporate job. But uh, that was the year that I actually went through my divorce and the mm. year right before COVID. And so um, I believe everything happens for a reason. So when COVID hit, you know, um, yeah, I had to close my studio for a few months and I was still working at my job. So I didn't I didn't end up leaving. So I always tell people like it's kind of like circumstances are what they are. Everything happens for a reason. I probably could have transitioned um, around year five and then worked to build from there. But it didn't happen that way. And so I stayed in my full time job and I stayed working my other business. But I started three more um, at that point uh, after divorcing my husband. Um, so I got rid of the negative influences in my life, changed the relationship with my mom and decided that I was going to be an entrepreneur. So I'm going to make this thing work. But my full time job, I actually like it. Like I liked my team and I had gotten to a good place. I was comfortable. And sometimes, you know, 
uh, when we get comfortable, we tend not I'm to move. Yeah. I was comfortable and growth growth always happens on the other side of comfort. And so um, what happened for me is that my then boss um, purposely gave me a negative performance review. Like this is a new boss. So that was on purpose and admitted to cyber stalking me and said some terrible things in my performance review. And um, I decided that that was the last straw. And um, that was it. I was like, you know what? I don't have to take this. I spent so many years of my life, over six years married, but 17 years in the relationship, feeling powerless, feeling hurt, feeling like I had lost my voice. I wasn't going to continue this way in an environment that I was choosing to be in, yeah. right? Yeah. Because everything that we do is a choice. Um, and so I chose to step away and become a full-time entrepreneur. So it wasn't necessarily a happy story of like we celebrated and all these things, but I, but I was comfortable and living in that comfort and not pushing myself to actually take the leap, which I could have done, like I said, years earlier. Yeah. So that's my, that's my transition story. Um, now there's a lot of things within that, but um, you know, I've never looked back since, and I'm glad that I made the decision to choose myself and build my businesses. Yeah. Kudos, bravo to you. Wow. What, <laughs> what a story. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being, feeling safe enough to share that. That's, that was a doozy. Um, <laughs> and with that, how did you settle on what you do now as a business coach, brand strategist? Do you feel like, I feel like with, with all the experience of starting and running and trying different businesses, you would understand branding, but how did you settle on like, this is the thing I'm going to, one of the businesses I'm going to focus on. Yes, I didn't start from the beginning of my story. I've actually been running businesses since I was 16. Okay. So my okay. All right. All right. Started at an early age and I've done different things in different industries. So my first business was e-commerce on eBay. Um, my second business was like financial services. Um, then I did some dabbling in business consulting early on um, for like taxes, okay. accounting and like structure. I was like a 20 something year old and I was doing, I partnered with a couple of other people. So I've had a few different business ventures before my studio even. And what I noticed was that I had a knack for building brands, like making, okay. making the brand itself, like the messaging, um, you know, what people thought about it look really, really good from the onset. Um, and so what I wanted to do was I was like, I want to do that for other people. And of course, people were asking me if they saw my business and how it was growing and like, how can you help me do this? What can I do to make things better? So I was naturally kind of just pulled into that direction. Wow. <laughs> I have so many questions. Let's just forget the topic altogether and get to, I'm joking. <laughs> like, hey. So what we, <laughs> what we want to talk about today is lead gen, right? Mm -hmm. Lead generation. And it's a crucial piece in any business. But yes. of course, as entrepreneurs, as seasoned entrepreneurs, we understand lead generation. But I want to like, bring it, scale it all the way back um, to and break so we can really break it down for the audience. First thing I want to ask is what is a lead? Like, what does it mean when people talk about leads? Mm -hmm. So a lead would be um, it's going to be a, a potential customer. And this would be someone who um is after the stage where they just learned about your business so they're interested a lead is interested they have acknowledged their interest in what you have to offer so we can't think of leads as social media followers we can't think of leads as people who passed us on the street and said hello or who may have walked past our storefront those are not leads right they're not yet they have not yet raised their hand and said i'm interested or I, in what you have to offer, I want to at least hear more from you. That would be a lead. Okay. And that's why I wanted to ask that question because I know we can go a whole, social media could be a whole other topic yeah. and a whole other day. But people feel like, yeah, I've, I've got blah, blah, blah followers and my business should just automatically grow, right? So I wanted to really get into that. Um, when you talk about leads and, and starting and running and growing a business, what it means to just have a lead. So with the lead has acknowledged you. They know about you, your product, your service, or at least they know more about you. They want to know more about you. They feel like mm -hmm. this is the person or this is a product or service that I need in order to solve my problem. Maybe they don't even realize they have a problem. Right. When it comes to generating leads, 
what is there a science to it? What works best to generate leads and, and then do it consistently? Yeah, you mentioned science. So I feel like marketing is science. Marketing is a science. Okay. Um, so yes, and this um, systems, lead generation, like that term to me equals system. So I'm an engineer. That's what my degree is in. Um, and everything is systems and processes. And the more that you can break these things down within your business, the more success that you're going to see. When things are chaotic and you're doing random things, that's when things seem like, oh my gosh, things aren't working or this didn't turn out as, you know, as I expected. Um, but the, the best way to get leads is actually to, number one, do the research to find out where your ideal customers are hanging out. That's the very first thing. Because we, you know, a lot of people will say you need to be everywhere. Well, that's not possible at certain stages in your business. Right. When you're beginning, it's it's literally impossible to be everywhere, especially if you're the one wearing all the hats. So the smartest thing to do is to show up in the places and spaces where your customers, your potential customers or ideal customers are in great numbers. That's the name of the game when you first start. And then we could talk about like ad additional tactics after that. But that really is how you want to get started. And then from there, you need to have a message that's tailored to that particular potential ideal client and explaining in clarity like like immense clarity what you do and how you can help them and that really is the way that you're going to be able to generate leads yeah okay and you made it sound really easy really simple find you know find where they're hanging out do the research find where they're hanging out and have your message really clear but when it actually comes to generating the leads i feel like this is where the real science comes in and mm -hmm. people have different ways from, you know, after, you know, seven years, you know, running my business, people, I've heard different things people do with when they generate leads and I know, you know funnels and that whole thing. We can go into all of that too. Just, and like you, like you mentioned that especially when you're just starting out, you're just kind of figuring out your business. Most likely it's you wearing all the hats and you figure out, okay, this is the service I want. We'll stick with service, I guess. This is the service I want to provide. And now I want to grow my, I want to, I want to make sales. So now I got to generate leads. I know where they're hanging out. How does, what does someone need to do to actually generate leads for their business to start to grow their new business? Yeah, let's let, let's just start with social media because that's probably the easiest place and the, okay. I think what people will most understand generating leads from social media. So the platform that you're on is going to absolutely uh, play a role in uh, being able to do this process. Um, but we talk about social media, we want to be creating content, right? That's going to talk about the service that we provide, how good it is, right? What the result is going to be. So when you're creating content, it's just not anything. It really should be specific to the transformation you provide, right? And that content within it has a call to action. So you want to tell your audience to do something, right? Typically, mm -hmm. um, if we just talk about, you talk, you mentioned funnel, so a basic funnel, it's going to tell them to download or click on this thing that's a lead magnet. What is a lead magnet? It helps you capture, yes, okay. leads, right? Um, and so it could be, it could be a podcast episode. It could be a course. It could be a guide. It could be a PDF of some sort. Um, they, you explain what this lead magnet is, right? Whatever, in whatever form it comes in. And that person will want the lead magnet. So in exchange for the lead magnet, you now get their information, which is their, e their name and their email. And that person has raised their hand now because they've given you their information that they want to hear more from you. So when you're building a relationship with a new client or customer, people will first pay you with their information before they pay you with their money, right? So mm -hmm. like if they have decided, I want to hear more from this person or at least see what she's about, that means they're interested in, in potentially exploring what might, what all might be there. You know, you've struck a nerve, like you said something in a problem that you can solve that they are experiencing. And so they want to know, how can you help me? Or what will the, what will the result be? And that, you know, having a system in place, right? Because it's not magic. We're talking about lead magnets and links and things. You do have to have a customer relationship management system. I know there's different schools of thought about this or CRM. I am of the school of thought that you must have a system. I don't right. tell yep. people to set things up with like 
you know, let's start with pen and paper and Excel and like you have to manually copy and paste, you will get overwhelmed really fast, even if your business is just starting out. And um, I think it's just best to set things up the right way from the beginning and let the software grow with you and your business versus trying to get together what really could be a mess um, after just a few short months if you just had have had everything in the system and took advantage of the feature. So um, those are kind of the pieces that you need in order to really be able to, one, generate leads and two, collect them and do something with them after. Yeah, right, right. Yes, and that's the thing. People might drop the ball on once they've actually generated the leads because generating a lead doesn't mean, oh, sale. Right. right. Sometimes right. I know, especially for me as a coach and the type of clients I work with, I really have to nurture those relationships before they actually do say yes. So I might yeah. have I have tons of leads. Right. But they're not all they're not all necessarily clients. So it's mm -hmm. really understanding that once you the person is in your orbit doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get their money. Maybe they they're checking out three or four of you exactly. know people in your industry. So what are you going to do or say? to be the one to kind of stand out for them. What would you say is, now I have another question. What would you say <laughs> is the biggest mistake you've noticed people make? Um, or maybe biggest mistake, and if there's like an oversight that people have when it comes to lead generation? Um, biggest mistake, not mm -hmm. having a next step in place. Okay. That's, that's right. probably the biggest mistake. So. It's like people think the work, like you said, the work is done once they're in your ecosystem or once they're on your list, the work is done. No, no, no. <laughs> there needs to be a next step that's given the next step and the next step and the next step, right? In order to be able to keep the relationship going and to build a no like, and trust factor. So when someone is cold, a cold lead, I mean, they know nothing about you or your brand, your, uh, your objective is to warm them up. So like if they join your list, right, okay. Now they are warm, not hot. They're warm, mm. right? Your 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 objective is like they're from warm to hot. So how can you do that? They need to be something else because they don't hear from you, or they're not hearing from you. You know, out of sight, out of mind. That is very true, especially in today's age, and people are getting so many emails. And if you can't capture their attention with what you're saying, then they're they're going to look at something else, or put it on the shelf, or put it in the parking lot for now. So that's like the biggest mistake. I think the biggest. Um, probably the biggest oversight, um, hmm. biggest oversight is if people don't respond, um, or maybe you send out what you, what you think is like enough emails, not following back up at some point at regular oh intervals. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love follow. Everybody that knows me, they call me follow up queen. So I mm -hmm. can go on and on about follow up because as you said, we get so many emails. There's just so much stuff coming at us every single day, right? So just because you've sent one or two emails and the person hasn't responded, doesn't necessarily mean they're not interested. It's just, I know as a coach, for example, coaching is not necessarily a priority for many people. They're not really thinking, oh yeah, I really need to get a coach right now. And like you said, with the no like trust factor, they need some time. So yeah. checking back in with them. And I always think, I always say, because I, I talk with clients about this all the time. And I always say, well, think about how many times you've gotten a message or read an email. And you're like, I don't know, standing in line at the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I'll, I'll reply to this later. And then later comes and goes. And then it's yep. another week, it's another two weeks. So it, it really is important to follow. Having a, basically to just be successful with lead generation, and in order to convert those into sales, mm -hmm. it really comes down to having a system in place, having some kind of flow, being able to take them through a journey, if you will, yes. so that you get them from cold to not just hot, they're just in the pot <laughs> with you and they've thrown their wallet at you, essentially. Yeah. And you're working with yep. them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So have a flow, folks. Have things automated. Do it from the the very beginning having some kind of system knowing what you want the people's journey to look like i guess you can say yeah. or what Depending kind of journey yeah. yeah what kind of you journey you want to take them on or like once you know they're on your mailing list it's great that you've gotten their email but now what right yeah. i've gotten emails from people 
Then I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even remember I was on their email list. Like, where is this coming from? It's been years (laughs) since I've gotten an email from them. And of course, naturally, I just unsubscribe. So, okay, that's another question. And then we'll start wrapping up. What is something that people, we kind of touched on funnels, which is like funnels are a whole other um, convo. What is something that people can do when they're nurturing a lead to Mm -hmm. keep them because not everybody will stay on your list. I'm trying to think of how yeah. to word this um, to keep them from wanting to unsubscribe. Like, how do you keep them interested to stay to want to stay on your email list? So this probably goes into like um, more advanced marketing techniques. But when I talked about like there's twofold having um, having a next step, I always like to say have an invitation ready. So. And I'm a big person, and I think a lot of people, they get a lot of emails, but they don't necessarily get the opportunity to, to personally interact. So mm-hmm. do you have something where someone can experience you or your team or your brand in full effect? Like, not everything that you would do in a, in a like, let's, let's use coaches, for example, uh, in a coaching program or if you're a service provider. Is there some way that they can experience with you? Uh, have an experience with you so that that will drive them closer to a decision versus just getting emails. I'm not saying that just emails don't work, but some people, because we're all different, right? Some people will be able to make a decision through copy. Other people will not. They will want to talk to someone or hear something, right? Think about the learning styles that people have, auditory, visual, and kinesthetic, right? How are you capturing that in your um in your customer journey, in your workflow. So I think that's a, to me, it's if, if you're only doing emails, and I know this kind of makes it a little bit more complicated, but you only have, you're only talking to like one type of person. And we're assuming that that person, that's their only, that's, that's the way that they like to receive information. They don't need the other types of learning styles. Um, so I always like to take that into consideration with everything that I'm doing, even when I'm doing workshops, everything I put together, like, captures three the three learning styles and i know it's because i'm a product of teachers so like this is this is what's okay. within me um i yeah. teach my class to do the same thing so i think it's really important that you speak to the people who have want to learn more from you but maybe email's not enough um and then i think um sometimes unsubscribes are okay right because you know well not sometimes they are okay uh because maybe it really isn't a good fit for that person like they thought they were they literally just got on your email list for the free thing. But when it comes to your brand, who you are and how you do things, it's not a good fit. So I tell people, don't be um, offended by unsubscribe. Some people might unsubscribe and then resubscribe later. Don't don't ask me what that's about. Maybe it was like they didn't think it was and they got something else or saw something else. I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on. I want to be back in back in the in crowd. Right. Um, but I, I think that's going to happen uh, over time. But as long as you're consistent with your message and how you deliver and giving people an opportunity to experience you in different ways, I think the unsubscribes will lessen, um, you know, over time and they won't bother you. over time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's a good. I love, I love that you added that piece because I remember the very beginning. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I got two unsubscribes. Oh, my God. Like, you're right. And you go in and you check your, your list. And now I'm just like. You know what? That's cool because I don't want people receiving my message. And then you kind of pay for the spots too. Let's just keep it real. Um, so I don't want people on my list. If they don't want to be on my list, they don't want to receive my content, go right ahead and unsubscribe. I think that's good. And maybe that you'll you'll kind of get a lot clearer on your message too. If there's mm-hmm. some way you can evaluate when people are unsubscribing, what you know, what could have caused them to unsubscribe. Okay, this is a really, really good convo. I love this. Thank you so much for sharing um, your expertise. On that note, what do you have coming up? Um, <laughs> so, of course, there's more speaking engagements. Um, I, ha- I don't have all the information for that right at this moment, but um, definitely folks, if they give me a follow, will definitely learn about that. Um, and I do plan on putting on a summit um, post Q2. Uh, the Brand Builder Blueprint Summit will be returning. Um, I don't have the the date yet, but definitely um, that's that's what will be coming up uh, post Q2. Okay, so just make sure you're following Crystal. Uh, You want to learn from her. You can tell just from this short conversation. I'm sure you're I was making notes. (laughs) Right. So I'm sure you were as well. So, Crystal, before I absolutely positively let you go, do you have a nugget to share with with the audience today? 
Yeah, I think of all the things that I've experienced and um, gone through and continue to go through and grow through, one thing that I tell people is to just do the fearless thing. Okay. Do the fearless thing. And some that's not, it's not the easiest thing. It's not the most popular thing, but it is the fearless thing. And that has become like the mantra of my life to do the fearless thing. So if I can leave one, one nugget of encouragement and advice, just do the fearless thing. Yeah, overcome that fear. Thank you so much for being here with me, sharing your wisdom, your expertise, your energy, your vibes, all that good stuff. I really, really, really do appreciate you. Looking forward to everything else that you will have uh, going on coming up uh, as the year progresses. And I will talk to you soon. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.